Oh, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Friday the 2nd of July. I hope you're well. Um, it's lovely that you can join me. Do comment. Let me know that you're here. Um, as always, we use a form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We'll use today's uh, one of today's Bible readings and a reflection on that reading. On a Friday, the theme for prayer is the cross. And so as we gather, we pause and we pray. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. And the psalm on a Friday is Psalm 31, Lord, make haste to deliver me. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me. O Lord, O God of truth. Lord, make haste to deliver me. And today is our final extract from St Paul's letter to the church in Rome as we've reached chapter 16 and I'm going to begin at verse 1 of chapter 16. St Paul says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Senarea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you. For she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. They risk their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches um, of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Epinatus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews, who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampelitus, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachys. Greet Apelles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodion, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Trimphia and Tryphosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Ocentricus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philogolus, Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All those wonderful names of people uh, that Paul wants to greet. And so we read a reflection on that passage written by Bishop Graham James. Personal greetings were customary at the conclusion of Paul's letters. It's a surprise, though, that he names 27 Christians in these few verses. How did Paul know so many people in Rome, all part of a church he'd never visited? It's been suggested that this list was transferred from another letter, perhaps to Ephesus, where Paul had lived for a long time. There seems little reason to think so. It's more likely that this chapter shows how quickly the Christian church became international and also was one in which women were given honour. After commending Phoebe, a deacon on her way to Rome, Paul greets Priscilla and Aquila, Prisca and Aquila. They were expelled from Rome under an edict of Claudius, as we read in Acts 18, and made their way to Corinth and Ephesus. They're now in Rome again, where they host a congregation in their house. People of means did travel in the Roman Empire. Christians could do so without substantial means, since they would find a community to receive and support them in the major centres. Paul greets everyone here as part of the same family, members one of another in the body of Christ. 
our allegiance to local church congregations may be narrower than the breadth of belonging demonstrated here. In these greetings, we see how quickly the Church of God transcended boundaries of gender, background and location. Would the same be said of the churches to which we belong today? That challenge that we are part of the body of Christ. And all those names, all those individuals, people Paul knew and greeted, people he commended for their faith, people who lived, whose stories we don't know, but who are fellow saints. And so we pray. To your cross, O Lord, we come for healing. We come with the broken-hearted and broken-spirited. We come with those with broken relationships. We come with the broken in body or in mind. We come with the weak and the disabled. We come with sinners and the guilty. To your cross, O Lord, we come for healing. By the nails through your hands and feet, give comfort to the suffering. By the crown of thorns upon your head, give hope to the despairing. By the spear that pierced your side, give courage to the heartbroken. By your being scorned and rejected, give love to the lonely. By your time of desolation, lift up all who are down. By your death on the cross, give us life which is eternal. Hear us, O Lord. And a prayer written by the Corimula community. God of old acquaintances, God of renewed friendships, we pray for peace on a grand scale, for breakthroughs through negotiation, for brokered talks and systemic change. But we know that peace comes also in the handwritten note, the courage to pick up the phone, the long-awaited acknowledgement of an unintended harm. May we attend to these little wounds, so that in their healing we may discover the joy and power of reconnection. Amen. And we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have won for me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. And so, Lord, by your passion protect us, by your wounds heal us, by your death, raise us up and bring us to life eternal. Amen. So thank you for joining me for prayer today and through this week. I hope you have a great weekend. And we'll be back here on Monday at 9.45. And there's a service in the church at 10.30 on Sunday and also here on YouTube uh, as well. So take care. Uh, God bless and see you soon.